Hello everyone, my name is Miss Christina and today I'm going to read to you from the book Shouting at the Rain by Linda Mullaly Hunt. Delcy is the main character in this book and she is obsessed with the weather. She loves tracking storms and watching the weather channel. But one summer, the winds of her life start to shift as her best friend decides she's done with her and wants to move on to other friends. So Delcy has to deal with these feelings of abandonment by her friend while also feeling abandoned by her mother who abandoned her when she was a baby. She's been raised by loving grandparents, so she never gave much thought to it before, but suddenly she becomes insecure about the missing pieces of her family. With the kind permission of Penguin, I'm going to read to you the first two chapters. Chapter 1, Until Now. There are two kinds of people, people who like surprises and people who don't. I don't. And yet, here is Amy Polach, my friend since first grade, marching through our front door as loud as a summer crow. Delcy, I have the best surprise! Uh-oh. So, she begins, you know that Michael and I tried out for the summer production at the Kate Playhouse, right? Yeah, I ask. Michael got a great part, but I, I got the lead! The lead! Can you believe it? She goes dead serious. Wait, autographs? Do you think people will actually ask for them? I think we'll have to get a red carpet leading up to your front door. This is no joke. She leans forward a bit. Do you know how many famous people started acting at the Playhouse? I think you've mentioned it, I say, smiling. After one giant step, she stands right in front of me. I really need your help, though. My help? Why would you need my help? You know I'd rather hang glide in a hailstorm than be in a play. She shakes her head. I don't need you in the play, Delcy. I just need you to help me with my part. The play is Annie, she says wide-eyed. The Hard Knock Life Annie? The movie we watched? She rolls her eyes. It was a play long before it was a movie. Whatever, Ames, you know the theater isn't my thing. Well, it's just that I really want to be... She waves her hand in the air like a magician. I want to be authentic. So, I don't understand how I can help. Wouldn't Michael be better? No, he can't help me. Not like you can. Michael has a family. I feel like I've tripped, but I haven't hit the ground yet. Tell me, she says, what's it like, really like, to be an orphan? The ground seems to move. She leans in, talking, talking, and talking, something about me being lucky, while I just stand there, caught in between wanting to disappear and wanting to help her. I feel around for an answer to her question, but I have none. I've thought about my mother, of course. I've wondered where she went to and where she's been, but I guess Amy is right. I was abandoned, and I am an orphan. But is it dumb to say that I've never really thought about it like that? Until now? Chapter 2. The Best One Yet Grammy! I call running down our stairs. Are you almost ready? She's in her work uniform, hanging over her jigsaw puzzle. She presses a piece in. I know you have ants in your pants because Brandy is back at Seaside, she says standing. No ants in my pants, though. Another season of cleaning all those guest cottages. Her hand pats the side of my cheek. Now, run and get our lunches from the fridge, and don't forget our favorite root beers. I'm to the kitchen and back in three seconds. Okay, let's go. We slide into the car. As always, she makes a cross on the dashboard with her finger, looks up through the windshield at the sky, and says a prayer for the car to start. When it does, she pats the dashboard again. That's a good darling. Starting for your old Bridget. She puts it in drive. You think it's weird I talk to the car? Only if you think it answers, I say. She coughs as she laughs. You hung the moon, you know that? That's one of Granny's best compliments. At the first stop sign, she looks over at me. You're like a tick about ready to pop, she says, excited to see Brandy. I know. I am so excited, but a tick ready to pop? Gross. No. Ew. 
I'll never understand how a girl who loves tornadoes and hurricanes and floods can be so scared of a little tick. The weather doesn't suck your blood, I say, expecting her to have a comeback, but she just shakes her head. She flips her turn signal. So, you talk to Brandy? She and her family staying for the summer as usual? Yeah, she and her mom anyway. Oh my goodness, I remember the day you two first met, Granny says, falling back against the car seat. Her mom was sweet enough to watch you on a day when I had no choice but to bring you along. And you and Brandy, as little as you were, sat side by side in one of those big Adirondack chairs. You've been like peanut butter and jelly ever since. I laugh. Grammy, who wants to be like peanut butter and jelly? That never ends well, for them anyway. Grammy shakes her head and then pulls into a parking spot and I turn. Can I go? Yes, but for heaven's sake, look both ways. As soon as my foot hits the red sidewalk leading into Seaside, I hear Brandy. Dell, she calls as she leaps up from a picnic table. The place already reeks like sunscreen and burning charcoal, even though it's barely nine o'clock. Summer has officially arrived. I race across the grass and we hug and jump around. Oh my gosh, how are you? She asks. I'm so happy to see you. Then she steps back. Wow, Dells, you've gotten tall this year. I did? And then I noticed that Brandy looks much older than me with makeup and a purse and the kind of clothes you buy in little stores instead of big ones. I feel a little funny about my faded Boston Marathon t-shirt, even though it was the greatest tag sale find of the summer last year. But Brandy is smiling and I'm happy to see her. I've already pulled out our collecting pail, she says, and that feeling in my stomach melts away. She's the old Brandy. Since kindergarten, we've collected rocks and shells each summer and glued and painted them to make sculptures. But first, I say, pulling at her sleeve, let's check on the house. Underneath a huge group of flowering bushes, there is a small stone house that we made the summer before second grade, hoping fairies would move in. That was five summers ago. Now we just check on it first thing. I drop to my knees and push the branches aside. The house isn't there. Where is it? Brandy asks, crouching next to me. I don't know. You think someone took it? She laughs. Well, it wasn't a mobile home, so yeah. Unless the fairies finally showed. She takes a step away. I crawl through nearby bushes to look for it. Come on, she says. Let's just head down to the beach. Don't you care? I ask. I mean, I wish it were there, Dells, but some little kids probably found it, so whatever. She tugs at my sleeve. Come on, let's go down to the beach. I have a tan to work on. A tan? Since when does she care about a tan? I follow, but the little voice that my neighbor Henry always warns me not to ignore, the one people hear in times of danger or when they're about to do something dumb, tells me a cold front is on the horizon. The air is shifting. I'm upset that the house is gone, but I'm mostly worried that Brandy couldn't care less. We grab the pails and when she runs, I do too. The Feisters have an old red pail and an old blue pail that Mrs. Feister and her brother used on the Cape a million years ago. They're made of scratched up metal with rust along the bottom edges. We use one pail for shells and one for rocks so the shells don't get broken. Okay, she says, rocks or shells? You choose, I smile, just happy to be back on Seagull Beach with Brandy. I miss her the rest of the year. We chat once in a while, but it isn't the same. We can't wait until her mother and my Grammy let us have our own phones. Although, I think I'm most excited about this app that tracks global lightning strikes. We spend the morning hanging out on the jetties, collecting things and having a couple splash fights with our feet. Finally, we get back to the picnic tables and spread everything out and talk about the sculptures we'll make. Brandy sorts the rocks by size. So, don't you think this is a little babyish to still do? Not if we like it. Yeah, I guess. And at least no one can see us. I look up at her. And if they do, who cares? Yeah, I guess you're right, she says. But I know Brandy. Her mouth may agree, but her brain is thinking something totally different.
If you'd like to read the rest of the book, you can read it at lakecounty.overdrive.com or you can download the Overdrive app on your device. And if you do end up reading it, let us know what you think. You can send us an email at kids at lcplin.org. Thank you for joining me and we will see you next Thursday with another book. Bye.